Welcome back Dream Team to part two of this project. In part one we configured Google OAuth 2 for whatever you want it to be to be fair. Uh, and in this little excellent part we are going to define some funky psychedelic servers. Uh, no, what am I talking about? We're going to do a node server that runs on a cron job and it's going to be a custom implementation of a cron system because all these packages are totally unnecessary. So, without further ado, let us continue. So we've got our tokens file. All of that stuff's all great. All we have to do now is implement the cron system. And so what we're going to do is, underneath these routes, uh, we're going to write a function. Uh, we're going to call it cron. And it takes two things. It takes a millisecond amount and it takes a function. And we're going to open that up. And we're going to make it asynchronous. Going to give it an a functionist function. I'm going to call it callback. And so basically, it's just like essentially a callback function that calls itself after a particular timeout that is equivalent to the millisecond amount that we pass it. So the first thing we're going to do is clear uh, timeout. Timeout. Um, <coughs> then we're going to go await for fn to complete. And then we're going to go timeout is equal to set timeout of the millisecond amount. And we have to pass in the callback function because that's the function that runs at the end of the set timeout amount. So that system is just going to go all in loops. And then after that, we have to go let initialize timeout is equal to set timeout. And the same thing, just set it off that first time. And the very last thing we need is, so this is just going to go in absolute loops, is to, and it's going to continuously run callback every time. Uh, the last thing we have to do is return an empty function just to tell our node server to run on initialization. So when we initialize this project, uh, we need it to start this cron system immediately. Um, so that's how to define the cron system within your node API or server. Or even if you're using a web scrape, it would be a great application for it. You know, web scrape at this time period. Uh, the second thing we need to do is actually give it the function. So here, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know, in this case, I could go every 3,000 milliseconds, every three seconds. Then we go empty function. Uh, async function in this case because we're calling Google API. Uh, open that up, close that down there. And what we're going to have to do is using the database functions that we defined in the previous video just at the end, uh, you can also just copy the code straight from the GitHub repository which is in the link in the description. Um, it's just like a self-implemented database uh, using JSON files. So we're going to go const tokens uh, is equal to read database and it's going to read the tokens.json file that we finished up with the refresh token and the access token from our uh, Google OAuth 2 authentication process. Uh, after that we're going to basically authenticate ourselves once again so OAuth 2 client uh, dot set credentials just pass it tokens um, and handshake is complete. Actually, not quite. We have to just communicate with Google. Tell this to Google real quick. So we go const YouTube because I'm using the YouTube API is equal to Google dot YouTube. Uh, open that up. Uh, version it's going to be version three at the moment, and then auth is auth to client. Cool. And so that will handshake with YouTube, and then we can start using the YouTube API functions. So the next thing we're going to have to do is define results. So const result, I'm just going to drink some water. Const result is equal to await YouTube. If you want to learn more about async to wait, uh, I have a short little video explaining it, but it's a great system and it basically is just a good way to handle asynchronous code. But it's going to be youtube.videos.list open that bad boy up. Uh, and the things that we want 
to pass it, we're going to give it the ID, which I defined up here, video ID, which is just equal to the V equals on whatever video it may be that you're using. So it's going to be video ID. And we're also going to tell it the parts that we want. And so we want statistics uh, and we want snippet. So snippet is like the description and everything like that. Um, and statistics is the current stats in the video. So if you wanted the current view count, which you know we might need. Next, we're going to go video is equal to result.data.items. So, you know, this whole process reaches out for this video and then we can uh, extract it. Const title is equal to video.snippet. So we can destructure the title from the video snippet. Const view count. Uh, is equal to video.statistics statistics cool uh, and then we want const new title is equal to backticks this video has uh, view count views easy peasy um, the next thing we're going to do is have to update our video so now that we've read the thing and so what we're going to do is we're going to say if Title dot includes uh, view count dot to string. So basically, this is just going to check if the current title already has the current view count in it. That means that no one else has watched it. Uh, sad times of guts for you. Uh, but basically, we don't want to call this unnecessarily because you have like a base limit that you can call. To the YouTube API for free and I mean it's super high and you probably won't run over it but it's just you know good to if you don't have to do it then don't do it uh, next we're gonna go so assuming the view count now is different to the title we're going to update everything so we're gonna go update result updated result makes more sense uh, is equal to await youtube.videos.update uh, we send a request body open that up the ID is the video ID the snippet which is the info is going to be another object so we're going to update the title which is going to be new title uh, and the category ID is video.snippet Dot category ID so that's just read from the snippet that we received earlier so it stays the same uh, if you have a description in your video you probably want to reset that otherwise you'll lose it and you can just read that through the same process but you'll yeah exactly uh, and then after here we want a comma and we're just gonna set the part to snippet uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy uh, and then after this whole thing has run, we can just console.log new title. So that's only going to run if the title has changed, and then we can just put a title else clause. So if else, we can console.log no one watches your content. Nice. And that is pretty much it. So why don't we start that up and the other thing I'm actually just going to do is for here we're just going to console.log uh, run so we know that whenever the cron job runs so that should run every three seconds so if I just npm start this bad boy up one two three uh, so I'm just going to console.log view count let's see if that's working And so it reads the current view count and that matches what it currently is. So it's not going to run this process, but basically it will work. And you know, you can see the proof on this particular video. It's worked this far, but yeah, that's how you implement a cron job in a node server or API. Uh, and if you want how to update your YouTube videos, I'd recommend setting it to like 120,000 or something like that. So it just doesn't happen all the time. Uh, but if it's happening all the time, then absolutely go for it. But yeah, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Um, come back for more content. I'll teach you everything you need to know to get your full stack developer job. And 
just be a pro coder. Sweet as. Peace.